birthday buddy. Good morning, and welcome to worship at St. James. It's a blessing to have you all with us. A special welcome to our guests and visitors today. Uh, we'd encourage everyone to sign the red folders and pass them to your neighbors so we have a record of who all is here. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, Pastor Jenny is away at a conference. She's feeling well this week, but she <laughs> still loves it when she's away. Uh, uh, she's uh, feeling well, but she's away with some old friends to, to study some things, so... Uh, Next weekend is our anniversary uh, dinner, so uh, we are passing around another sign-up sheet for RSVPs. We would love to know who all is going to be here. We have the service at 9.45, just one service next week at 9.45, and then uh, the meal will be at noon, and there's a program in between. So uh, please join us for the meal if you can, and please RSVP. If you uh, signed up last week, you don't have to sign up again. Uh, but if you're not totally sure, you can still sign up online after this. So, uh, but we encourage everyone to sign up today if you can. Um, and that's that. And then also today at 4 o'clock is grief group. So if you or someone you know is grieving, uh, please invite them to, uh, to that uh, time of conversation and, uh, and support. Okay. I believe that's all the announcements I have. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin with our call to worship. Come, let's praise God together. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's tell stories of God's power and majesty, his mighty acts throughout history. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's remember the compassion he has shown toward us, his mercy and unfailing love, generation after generation. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's pass these stories along to our children and grandchildren so that they too may come to know and love our God. For God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's worship God together. Thanks be to God. Our first song is Kyrie Eleison. I invite the congregation to stand and our kids to come forward to play instruments.
Continue with our opening litany. The word of God came to Jonah. The word of God comes to us. Go out into this world despite your fears. Speak the truth of God. Love your neighbor and your enemy. Forgive as you have been forgiven. Receive grace upon grace overflowing from the fullness of God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of the seas, sky, and land, when Jonah turned to run from you, you showed him that nothing and no one could hide from your presence. You are in all things, and you love all things. Show us the gift of your presence, and help us to carry your word of compassion and grace to all the world. In the name of the one who carried out your love flawlessly, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our choir, uh, choir anthem. Happy birthday, Caleb, I 
we're having some technical difficulties with the stream, so we'll have to post that later in the afternoon. Our reading is from the book of Jonah, and it's actually most of the book of Jonah, chapters 1, 3, and 4. We skipped the long prayer that Jonah has from the belly of the whale. So, Jonah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, and so he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hole of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up and call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging, and then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And after a long prayer, the fish spewed him up on the shore. And then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love 
and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about this bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing our next song, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. 